December 25, 800, Charlemagne, the King of Francia, was crowned as a Roman Emperor by the Pope, reviving the title in Western Europe more than three centuries after the fall of the ancient Western Roman Empire. In 476, his glorious dominion would gradually split in two kingdoms, one in west and one in the east. The eastern Frankish kingdom would conquer more and more territory, expanding its boundaries from the Atlantic to Pannonia. This state would become the most powerful one in Europe and would take the name, Holy Roman Empire. In this video we are going to see how did this country came to its existence and what were its origins. As Roman power in Gaul declined during the 5th century, local Germanic tribes assumed control. In the late 5th and early 6th centuries, the Merovingians, under Clovis I and his successors, consolidated Frankish tribes and extended hegemony over others to gain control of northern Gaul and the Middle Rhine River Valley region. By the middle of the 8th century, however, the Merovingians were reduced to figureheads, and the Carolingians, led by Charles Martel, became the de facto rulers. In 751, Martel's son Pepin became king of the Franks, and later gained the sanction of the Pope. The Carolingians would maintain a close alliance with the papacy. In 768, Pepin's son Charlemagne became king of the Franks and began an extensive expansion of the realm. He eventually incorporated the territories of present-day France, Germany, Northern Italy, the Low Countries and beyond, linking the Frankish kingdom with papal lands. Although antagonism about the expense of Byzantine domination had long persisted within Italy, a political rupture was set in motion in earnest in 726 by the iconoclasm of Emperor Leo III the Isaurian in what Pope Gregory II saw as the latest in a series of imperial heresies. In 797, the Eastern Roman Emperor Constantine VI was removed from the throne by his mother Irene, who declared herself Empress. As the Latin Church only regarded a male Roman Emperor as the head of Christendom, Pope Leo III sought a new candidate for the dignity, excluding consultation with the Patriarch of Constantinople. Charlemagne's good service to the Church in his defense of papal possessions against the Lombards made him the ideal candidate. On Christmas Day of 800, Pope Leo III crowned Charlemagne Emperor, restoring the title in the West for the first time in over three centuries. This can be seen as symbolic of the papacy turning away from the declining Byzantine Empire towards the new power of Carolingian Francia. Charlemagne adopted the formula Renovatio Imperii Romanorum Renewal of the Roman Empire. In 802, Irene was overthrown and exiled by Nicephoros I, and henceforth there were two Roman emperors. After Charlemagne died in 814, the imperial crown passed to his son, Louis the Pious. Upon Louis' death in 840, it passed to his son Lothair, who had been his CEO ruler. By this point, the territory of Charlemagne was divided into several territories, and over the course of the later 9th century, the title of emperor was disputed by the Carolingian rulers of the Western Frankish Kingdom or West Francia and the Eastern Frankish Kingdom or East Francia, with first the Western King Charles the Bald and then the East and Charles the Fat, who briefly reunited the empire, attaining the prize. In the 9th century, Charlemagne and his successors promoted the intellectual revival known as the Carolingian Renaissance. Some, like Mortimer Chambers, opine that the Carolingian Renaissance made possible the subsequent renaissances even though by the early 10th century, the revival already diminished. After the death of Charles the Fat in 888, the Carolingian Empire broke apart and was never restored. According to Regino of Prum, the parts of the realm spewed forth kinglets, and each part elected a kinglet from its own bowels. The last such emperor was Berengarii of Italy, who died in 924. Around 900, East Francia's autonomous stem Duchess Franconia, Bavaria, Swabia, Saxony, and Lotharingia reemerged. After the Carolingian King Louis the Child died without issue in 911, East Francia did not turn to the Carolingian ruler of West Francia to take over the realm, but instead elected one of the dukes, Conrad of Franconia, as Rex Francorum Orientalium. On his deathbed, Conrad yielded the crown to his main rival, Henry the Fowler of Saxony, who was elected king at the Diet of Fritzlar in 919. 
Henry reached a truce with the raiding Magyars, and in 933 he won a first victory against them in the Battle of Riade. Henry died in 936, but his descendants, the Liadolfing or Ottonian dynasty, would continue to rule the Eastern Kingdom or the Kingdom of Germany for roughly a century. Upon Henry the Fowler's death, Otto, his son and designated successor, was elected king in Aachen in 936. He overcame a series of revolts from a younger brother and from several dukes. After that, the king managed to control the appointment of dukes and often also employed bishops in administrative affairs. He replaced leaders of most of the major East Frankish duchies with his own relatives. At the same time, he was careful to prevent members of his own family from making infringements on his royal prerogatives. In 951, Otto came to the aid of Adelaide, the widowed queen of Italy, defeating her enemies, marrying her, and taking control over Italy. In 955, Otto won a decisive victory over the Magyars in the Battle of Lechfeld. In 962, Otto was crowned emperor by Pope John XII, thus intertwining the affairs of the German kingdom with those of Italy and the papacy. Otto's coronation as emperor marked the German kings as successors to the empire of Charlemagne, which, through the concept of translatio imperii, also made them consider themselves as successors to ancient Rome. The flowering of arts beginning with Otto the Great's reign is known as the Ottonian Renaissance, centered in Germany but also happening in northern Italy and France. Otto created the imperial church system, often called Ottonian Church System of the Reich, which tied the great imperial churches and their representatives to imperial service, thus providing a stable and long-lasting framework for Germany. During the Ottonian era, imperial women played a prominent role in political and ecclesiastic affairs, often combining their functions as religious leader and advisor, regent or CEO ruler, notably Matilda of Ringelheim, Edith, Adelaide of Italy, Theophanu, Matilda of Quedlinburg. In 963, Otto deposed the current pope, John XII and chose Pope Leo VIII as the new pope, although John XII and Leo VIII both claimed the papacy until 964, when John XII died. This also renewed the conflict with the Byzantine Emperor, especially after Otto's son Otto II adopted the designation Imperator Romanorum. Still, Otto II formed marital TIs with the East when he married the Byzantine princess Theophanu. Their son, Otto III, came to the throne only three years old and was subjected to a power struggle and series of regencies until his age of majority in 994. Up to that time, he remained in Germany, while a deposed duke, Crescentius, ruled over Rome and part of Italy, ostensibly in his stead. In 996, Otto appointed his cousin Gregory V the first German Pope, a foreign Pope and foreign papal officers were seen with suspicion by Roman nobles, who were led by Crescentius to revolt. Otto's former mentor, Antipope John XVI, briefly held Rome until the Holy Roman Emperor seized the city. Otto died young in 1002, and was succeeded by his cousin Henry II, who focused on Germany. Otto III's and his mentor Pope Sylvester's diplomatic activities coincided with and facilitated the Christianization and the spread of Latin culture in different parts of Europe. They co-opted a new group of nations Slavic into the framework of Europe, with their empire functioning, as some remark, as a Byzantine-like presidency over a family of nations, centered on Pope and Emperor in Rome. This has proved a lasting achievement. Otto's early death, though, made his reign the tale of largely unrealized potential. Henry II died in 1024, and Conrad II, first of the Salian dynasty, was elected king only after some debate among dukes and nobles. This group eventually developed into the College of Electors. The Holy Roman Empire eventually came to be composed of four kingdoms, Kingdom of Germany part of the empire since 962, Kingdom of Italy from 962 until 1801, Kingdom of Bohemia from 1002 as the Duchy of Bohemia and raised to a kingdom in 1198, Kingdom of Burgundy from 1032 to 1378.
Kings often employed bishops in administrative affairs and often determined who would be appointed to ecclesiastical offices. In the wake of the Cluniac reforms, this involvement was increasingly seen as inappropriate by the papacy. The reform-minded Pope Gregory VII was determined to oppose such practices, which led to the investiture controversy with Henry IV, the King of the Romans and Holy Roman Emperor. Henry IV repudiated the Pope's interference and persuaded his bishops to excommunicate the Pope, whom he famously addressed by his born name Hildebrand, rather than his regnal name Pope Gregory VII. The Pope, in turn, excommunicated the King, declared him deposed, and dissolved the oaths of loyalty made to Henry. The King found himself with almost no political support, and was forced to make the famous walk to Canossa in 1077, by which he achieved a lifting of the excommunication at the price of humiliation. Meanwhile, the German princes had elected another king, Rudolf of Swabia. Henry managed to defeat Rudolf, but was subsequently confronted with more uprisings, renewed excommunication, and even the rebellion of his sons. After his death, his second son, Henry V, reached an agreement with the Pope and the bishops in the 1122 Concordat of Worms. The political power of the empire was maintained, but the conflict had demonstrated the limits of the ruler's power, especially in regard to the church, and it robbed the king of the sacral status he had previously enjoyed. The Pope and the German princes had surfaced as major players. A new idea appeared within the country, known as Ostseedlung, which meant the migration of ethnic Germans into the territories in the eastern part of Francia, East Francia, and the Holy Roman Empire and beyond, and the consequences for settlement, development, and social structures in the areas. As the result of Ostseedlung, less populated regions of Central Europe in sparsely populated border areas in present-day Poland and Czechia received a significant number of German speakers. Silesia became part of the Holy Roman Empire as the result of the local pious dukes push for autonomy from the Polish crown. From the late 12th century, the Duchy of Pomerania was under the suzerainty of the Holy Roman Empire and the conquests of the Teutonic Order made that region German-speaking. 